Okay, this is the two unit probability. Okay, now, just some um, important terms. Mutually exclusive events are um, if one event occurs, the other cannot. In other words, they can't occur at the same time. Mutually exclusive events can't occur at the same time. Okay? So, equally likely outcomes. What does the word equally likely outcome? equally likely mean. If an experiment is conducted and all the outcomes have the same chance of occurring, then the outcomes are said to be equally likely. Examples of equally likely, tossing a coin, you could get what? Heads or tails. And tossing a die, you could get one, two, three, four, five, six. In each case, the outcomes are equally likely. Now, an example of a situation where outcomes are not equally likely would be the following. A 100 metre sprint with, all right, you probably don't know who Jane Fleming is, but with you, tell me the name of a runner. Is it with, all right, we can put with, is it Y-U-S-A-I-N? Usain Bolt. So a 100 metre sprint with Usain Bolt and two of you, there is, you can't say there's three of us in the race and we've got a one in three chance of winning. Let me tell you, you've got no chance of winning. <laughs> so it's not equally likely. So horse races as well, things like that, where there's ability, football teams playing each other, tennis players, etc. Where it's a sport, the ability, you know, of the athlete. Um, makes it not equally likely. It's not like you're pulling names out of a hat. So um, another example where things are not equally likely would be I win, Jane wins, each of you win, are not equally likely as we enter the race with different levels of fitness, ability and so on. So let's say you win a race and someone else ran the race. You can't therefore conclude, oh, we've got both a 50% chance of winning because you've still got different levels of ability, okay? So where ability is involved, you, the outcomes are not equally likely. Okay, now, definition of probability for equally likely outcomes only. Now, this is the notation. This is how we write probability of an event, P and E in brackets. Now, you just write, let's say you want to roll, oh, no, we'll, we'll see that down there. So probability of the event, you write what the event is in the brackets, now, the probability of the event is the number of outcomes satisfying your event over the total number of possible outcomes. And the way we write that, it's NE, which is number of outcomes satisfying the event, and NS. Do you know what the S is for? Sample space. Number of elements in the sample space. Now, we've got that down here. PE means probability of the event. N means number of outcomes satisfying. So NE means number of outcomes satisfying the event, E means the event, and S means the sample space or the list of all possible outcomes. Yes, we are now. Here are the examples. A die is thrown. So I'm just going to write down here what we could get. One, two, three, four, five, six. There's my, that's called my sample space. Okay? We're not going to ask you, list the sample space, all right? All right, so that is the sample space. A die is thrown. What's the probability of a six? All right, and whenever you give all these answers, they need to be simplified. Probability that it's even is three out of six because you've got two, four, or six, but now simplify it. What do you get? A half. Okay. Probability that it's a ten? Zero. And a probability that it's less than 3 is the probability of a 1 or a 2. So I'm just adding more there, which is 2 out of 6, which is 1 out of 3. So you have to simplify your, um, simplify your um, probabilities, please. Okay? Are we good? Next. A bag contains 3 red four white and two blue marbles. One is drawn at random. So how many have we got in total, by the way? Let's write what we've got in total. Three and four, seven, total equals nine. Okay, probability of red, just doing the really easy ones today, girls. Red is? 
good, which is probability of red or blue. Probability of red or blue is yeah, five out of nine can't be simplified. Probability that it's not red. <coughs> you can do this two ways. Oh, we'll do complementary later. So not red would be white or blue, which is? Six out of nine, which is? And probability of yellow? Oh, yeah, there's no yellow. Okay, all good. Cards, there are 52 cards, okay? So let's just look over here first. There are 52 cards. Does anyone know how many red, how many black? Half, half. So 26 red, 26 black. Now, with the red ones, there are two types of reds. There are hearts and diamonds. Hearts and diamonds. There are 13 hearts and 13 diamonds. And there are clubs. They look like that. And there are spades. They look like that. So there are 13 clubs and 13 spades. Now, hearts, diamonds clubs and spades are called suits. don't know why. And in each suit, for example, in the hearts, you've got, well, an ace is like one. Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You've got the jack, the queen and the king. So in hearts, you've got each of those. In diamonds, you've got the ace of diamonds, the two of diamonds, the three of diamonds, up to the ten of diamonds, the jack of diamonds, the queen of diamonds, the king of diamonds. Same with the clubs, each one of those, and same with the spades. So girls, how many aces are there in a set of cards, for example? Yeah, there's four of everything. So there is four of each, well, we call it type, of card. So for example... Well, no, they're the suits. There's four of each type of value card, I suppose. For example, there's four twos. There are four times ten, tens, four of the tens. There are four jacks. There are four queens. There are four kings. There are four aces. Okay, four twos, four threes, fours, five, sixes, sevens. There are four eights, four nines, four tens. And I'll just go through to, do you know what I mean? Dot, dot, dot. Okay. So there's four of each type of value card. Like there's 13 different types of value card and there's four of each of those. 13 times four is 52. Okay. So we've got four of each of those. One of each type. One heart, one club, one diamond, one spade. The cards, the hearts, ace is like a one. Then we've got two up to ten. Then the jack, the queen and the king, sorry, of hearts. Here are the diamonds. There's the diamonds. Ace, two to ten of diamonds. Jack, queen, king of diamonds. Here are the clubs, ace of clubs, two up to ten. Then jack, queen, king. And we've got the spades, ace of spades, two up to ten. Jack, Queen, King. Okay? So look, looking down, four aces, four twos, four threes, four of each type if you look down the columns. Okay? Half the cards are red, half of them are black. A quarter of them are hearts, a quarter are diamonds, one quarter are clubs, and one quarter are spades. Okay, let's do some examples. From a deck of 52 cards, one is drawn at random. What is the probability of a red card? You don't have to say 26 out of 52. You can do 26 out of 52, but I just say a half of them are red. All right, probability of a king. How many kings are there? It's four out of 52, or you could just say it's one out of every 13, because you know for example, that you've got 1 out of every 13, 1 out of 13, or you can go 4 out of 52 if you want. Probability of a black 2. How many black 2s are there? Only 2 of them. So a black 2 
is 2 out of 52 or 1 out of 26? The probability of a heart or just a quarter of them. So heart, you can go 13 out of 52 or you can just say, I know it's a quarter of the cards. Probability of an 8, now that is any 8, any 8, how many 8s are there? Or a black 7, how many of those? So it's 6 cards, which is 3 on 26. Now 8, again, as we said, there are, there are 4 8s and there are 2 black 7s. So that's 6 cards. Probability of the ace of spades, there's only one of those. So that's one out of the 52. Probability of a red or a black is everything. Yep, it's one whole, 52 out of 52, which is one whole. Probability of a red, be careful, how many reds? But they include some tens. And we just add two more for the tens. So we've got 26 plus 2, 28 out of 52. Divide them both by 4, 7 on 13. Are we good? Probability of a club. Yep, there's the clubs. There's 13 of them. Plus how many other fives? One, two, three other fives. So club is 13. The other three fives are, makes it 16. Out of 52, divide them both by 4, 4 out of 13, probability of green, zero. zero. Okay, so we can get rid of that. Next, 1,000 tickets are sold in a raffle and I bought five tickets. Okay, we're going to do complimentary events in a minute. Um, what's the probability that you will win? That says will not. Let's five just do. Out of a yeah, the probability that you'll win is five out of a thousand. And what's the probability that you will not? So this is how we write. Probability of win is that. But you can just do not win straight away. Nine, nine, five, nine, yeah, you've got nine hundred ninety-five chances out of a thousand that you don't win, and then put it on your calculator. Um, without putting it on your calculator, if winning's one out of two hundred, what's not winning? 199 out of 200. So if you put 995 over 1,000 into your calculator, you should get 199 over 200. So that brings us up to complementary events. See, probability of winning and probability of not winning are complements of each other. They're sort of opposites, okay? Now, when you do a probability experiment, the sum of all probabilities for all outcomes will be 1. 1 meaning 100%. That's everything possible. So this is really important for complementary events. The sum of all probabilities for the outcomes of an experiment will always be 1. For example, a coin is tossed. What's the probability of a head? What's the probability of a tail? So a half plus a half equals 1. So probability of head is a half, probability of a tail is a half, and a half plus a half is 1. Got it? Now, I could do that with lots of other things. Um, let's do the boy girl. You got a bit of room? All right, if you have, oh no, that's tree diagrams. We won't do that. Just leave it. All right, complementary events. If the probability of an event occurring is little p, then the probability that the event does not occur is 1 minus p. Now p, probabilities always lie between 0 and 1. So this p here is just a fraction or a decimal, as long as it's between 0 and 1. So if you know that the probability, it's just like our example up there, the probability of winning was 1 out of 200, so not winning was 1 minus 1 over 200, which is 199 out of 200. So now, then the probability that the event does not occur is 1 minus P. That is, now this is the notation, P, E with a squiggly line on top or even a straight line on top of the E means probability of not occurring. So that means not E. So E with a squiggly line on top means not E. 
So therefore, the probability of E not occurring is 1 minus the probability of E occurring. Now, when do we use those sorts of questions? You'll see it when it says at least. Now, I really need to do some examples on those. There's not enough here, okay? Now, we'll get to this rest in a, in a minute. I'm going to do some more questions from the exercise, right? Now, as I was saying, all probabilities, I need to do more on this at least business, right? So all probabilities lie between 0 and 1. So the probability of E occurring, it can be 0. 0 means what? 0 is impossible. 1 is certain. Remember that? So it is impossible. If it's impossible for an event to occur, then the probability of the event is 0. If it is certain that the event will occur, the probability of the event is 1. Any probability greater than 1 or less than 0 is meaningless. It's not, doesn't occur. Okay? Now, we need to do more on this. So I will get some examples in a minute. Now, if we ask for... Wait a second. If we ask you about non-mutually exclusive events, now, when we looked at the other side of the page, it said mutually exclusive means one can't occur with when the other one does occur. Now, I'm going to do an example of non-mutually exclusive events here. Girls, I might say to you, um, probability of A or B is the probability of A plus the probability of B minus probability of A and B. Now, you can use Venn diagrams for this, but I'm going to ask you a question now. How many people in here do physics? Study physics? So I'm going physics. Hands up. I've got one, two, three. Look, big hands, please. One, two, three, four. Only five people in here that study physics, right? So I've got physics, five. Chemistry, hands up. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Is that right? One, two, hands up again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten that do chem. Now, does that mean I've got 15 people that do physics and chemistry? No. Hands up the people that do both. I've got three that do both. So this is what we draw. Physics circle. Chemistry circle. The overlap is three. So if only five people do physics, I've got three in the overlap. What do I write here? Two. So two only do physics. Chemistry, we've got ten. There's already three, seven. So if I ask in this question here, the probability of physics or chem, I don't do... Okay. How many people in the class here today? Did we say we had two people away? We've got 19 people here. So if I ask for the probability that you do physics or chemistry, it's how many people? Do I go five out of 19? Physics or chem. So physics and chem is easy. That's three. Physics or chem is, you can say five out of 19, plus 10 out of 19. Girls, it's not 15 of you. I've got to take away the people. I've counted... See, girls, this is how many people. This is how you draw it. The page is 7 plus 2. Seven, no, that's not enough. It's got to be 7 plus 2 is 9, <laughs> plus 3 is 12. The answer should be 12 <coughs> out of 19 of you do physics or chem. So, but if I do 5 out of 19 plus 10 out of 19, haven't I counted 3 people twice? So I'm minus 3 out of 19. So this is what it means. Probability of A or B is just the physics people, just the chem people, but minus the physics and the chem people. So, and you can see it in my diagram. If I've got 10, 12, how many people don't do any of these subjects if there's 19 in the class? Anyone? Seven. Seven goes outside the circle. So... I can see I've got 10 that do chem, 5 that do physics, 3 that do both. So if I want the physics or the chem people, I go 7 plus 3 plus 2 is 12. But if you just do 
5 out of 19 and 10 out of 19, you have got too many people. So I need the both people, both physics and chem are 3. So I go 5 out of 19 plus 10 out of 19 minus 3 out of 19 is 12 out of 19. Okay? Now, why is this called? Um, on the first page, I said mutually exclusive events. If one event occurs, the other cannot. Why is studying physics and chemistry non-mutually exclusive events? Number one, they're on different lines, and you can study both. So they're non-mutually exclusive. In other words, if you do one, you can have the other as well. But mutually exclusive would be anything that's on the same line as us, so, for example, the extension one line, whatever is also on that line, you can't study that. So they're mutually exclusive. Do, do you get what I'm saying? But if two subjects are on different lines, they're not mutually exclusive because you can study both. But if they're on the same line and that subject isn't offered on any other line, they are mutually exclusive. You can't study both subjects. Next, multi-stage events. When an experiment, girls, as soon as, ladies, there is more than one thing happening in this experiment. Let's say you toss a coin. As soon as you pick that coin up and toss it again, that becomes a multi-stage event. Or if you roll a die twice, you're doing two things. Rolling it once is one event, rolling it twice is another. Or if you roll two die, die at the same time, you set it up exactly the same as rolling one and then the other. So rolling two things at the same time or three things at the same time is the same as rolling it once and then again and then again, multi-stage. If you toss two coins at the same time, we treat it in the same way as tossing one coin, picking it up and tossing another. The tree diagram that you will draw will be the same. So as soon as something's happening more than once, there is more than one event happening that's multi-stage. Now, when you have multi-stage, there are three ways that you can work out all the outcomes. The first one is a systematic listing. For example, if I toss a die and toss a coin, you know with the die, you can get one, two, three, four, five, six. Or with the coin, you can get head or tails. Now, you can do this in a tree diagram if you want, but sometimes the tree diagram gets too big. You can just match up, for example, the head with, with each of those, a one and a head, a two and a head, three head, four head, five, six head, or, and match up each of those with the tail, one tail, two tail, three tail, four tail, five tail, six tail. That is a systematic listing. So therefore, we've got 12 outcomes. And I might give you an example. The probability of having an odd number, I should have rubbed these out, probability of an odd with a tail. What have you got? Odd and tail. You've got one, two, three out of 12, which is a quarter. Oh, wrong one. Your one doesn't have it. Here we go. Sorry. The probability of odd and a tail is 3 out of 12, which, yeah, there, just get rid of that one. Actually, it was meant to go, yeah. 3 out of 12, which is a quarter. Okay, now, that's okay because there's only 12. You could have drawn, done a tree diagram as well, okay? I don't tend to list, but you can sometimes. Now, two dice are tossed. There is no way, don't ever think of a tree diagram when you toss two dice. 36 outcomes. If you did a tree diagram, you've got 36 things you need to write down the page. Too many. This is what you do. You do a six by six grid. You put one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can list them. One, one, see, one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. Yeah, two, one, two, 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 etc. But I'm going to in. Can you get another colour? Sometimes they want, for example, let's look at this one. We're going to do some other questions here. What's the probability of the same number occurring? 
the same number. You've got 6 out of 36, which is 1 sixth. All right, I want you to do another question. I'm going to put totals in pink. So what I'm going to do is in the corner, I'm going to put a plus sign, get a red pen or something. So you can use these diagrams two ways, listing them, or they might ask you for the sum of the digits on the uppermost faces. So if you rolled a one and a one, what's the sum? A two and a one, three. Three and a one is four, five, six, seven. A two and a one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you can do the tree diagram not only to list the outcomes, but to do the sum. Okay? <laughs> six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, if you were asked for the sum, you wouldn't list the one, 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 two. 1, 3, you would just put the sum as I have in pink. Now I might ask you for the probability that the of a sum greater than greater than 9. What's the probability of a sum greater than 9? How many boxes have a sum greater than 9? So two die are rolled. So I've got, isn't that the probability of a 10, 11, or a 12? Probability of a sum greater than 9, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It's 6 out of 36, which is 1 sixth. What about the probability of an even number, sum, an even sum? We could ask that. Do you reckon it's half of them? I don't know. Probability of a sum that's even. Don't tend to see this question. So you'd add what? The two with the? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, I was wondering if they were half. Yeah, it's a half of them. All right? So they can ask you for the sum. They can ask you for the difference. Yes. All right, yes, let's do that question. What is the probability of a 2 or a 1 being rolled? You have to count it twice. That is a 1, 2. So plus a probability of a 2 and a 1. So anyway, you could have both ways. Do you get it? Yes. So it's 2 out of 36 which is 1 out of 18. Okay, yes, but they're different because the left-hand die could be a 1 and the right-hand die is a 2. That's different to the left-hand die being 2 and the right-hand die being 1. So a 2 and a 1, there are two ways of doing it. Those two. There's 2. So if out of, there's a bag of marbles and you pick the red first and then a blue second, blue second, that's the same if you pick the blue first and the red second. So two or a one, you don't have to set it out like that. You just have to see that there's two in the table. But as I was saying, if I've got the left die and the right die, you could have a two and a one or a one and a two. They are different if you were spinning them. So there are two ways. Oh, yeah, two and one. Thank you. Probability of a 2 and a 1. Sorry, thank you. So it's the probability of a 2 and getting a 2 and a 1. So that's 2 out of 3. You can't. If you're rolling twice, you've got to, it'd have to be both. So, no, what's the probability that you'll get a 2 and a 1 on the uppermost faces? Is two? Two, oh, two out of, I meant to put 2 and 1, not or. So this is the or. You could get the 1 and the 2 or the 2 and the 1. Okay. So, yeah, the question's meant to be probability of a 2 and a 1. You don't have to write it out like that. Just look. There are two ways. Yeah. You, no, no, no. If you were spinning 2, you can't get all. Yeah. If you're spinning, sorry, if you've got the 2 die, you've got to get this number and that number. You can't just get the or. My question was flawed. Okay. All right. Now, tree diagrams. 
Look, we'll get when we do some questions, it'll be easier. A family has three children. Assuming that boys and girls are equally likely, apparently we're not really. I think there's a bigger chance of slightly <coughs> less than a percent higher. Is it the boys or the girls? It was one of those. A family has three children. Assuming that boys and girls are equally likely, draw a tree diagram to list all the outcomes. Boy and girl for the first child, doesn't matter whether you've had a boy, you're not more likely to have a boy next time. Boy and girl for the second. So we go boy, girl, then from boy you have to branch out boy, girl, from girl you have to branch out boy, girl. So on each of these four ends now, for the third child, we need new branches. Boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl, boy, girl. Sample space, read along each branch to the ends. What do we got? Boy, 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 oh boy, 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 girl. Boy, girl, boy, boy, girl, girl. Girl, boy, boy. Girl, boy, girl. Girl, girl, boy, and girl, girl, girl. So how many possibilities are there? How many different ways? Eight. Yep, eight possibilities. Eight possibilities. What are the probability of two girls and a boy? Just put dots. Two girls. Find the probability of two girls and a boy. Three. Okay. No, it's three. It's the fourth one, the sixth, fifth, no, the, the sixth and the seventh. What's the probability of all boys? One. All right, now we're going to do the one out of eight. Now, I want the probability of at least... This is complementary events. One boy. At least. At least one boy. Don't you subtract? I'm asking you. What does at least one boy mean? One minus you want the probability of one boy, wait, this is the long way, plus probability of two boys, wait, this is the long way, plus three boys, this is ridiculous. Yeah, but that's silly. Now, instead of that, we're going to do complementary events. So that's too long. Probability of at least one boy. Probability. Well, you can, but girls, not every question is going to be that easy. So that's one way of doing it. You can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Probability of at least one boy. You don't have to do them all separately. But at least one boy means one boy or two boys or three. That's what it means. Now, instead of doing it that way, probability of at least one boy is this way. Probability of at least one boy equals one minus the probability of no boys, which is one minus the probability of three girls. Isn't it everything except for three girls? At least one boy is everything except for three girls. So it's just one minus what? Seven. One on eight, which is seven on eight. Now, I know in this question you can just count them, but they will ask you this sort of question where you're really not going to want to count them. All right? It's going to be a lot harder than to count them. So that's where, when we were looking at the other sheet and it said... Now, this is the example of complementary events. Because all events, outcomes, add up to one. Okay, now, girls, do I need to move over to the other side or not? So this is the example where at least it's one minus none. One minus no boys. Because at least means one boy or two or three. Now, can I move? Over here, what's the probability of each of these? What's the probability of three boys? And that, and that, they're all one eighth, and when you add them up, what do you get? 
The probability of each of those is one out of eight. So girls, but when we do our probability questions, they're very rarely going to be equally likely. We're going to have probabilities on branches. Next lesson. So when they're equally likely, you've got a one in eight chance of three boys, a one in eight chance of this order, two boys and a girl, in that order. One in eight chance of the next one in that order. But two boys and one girl in any order was three out of eight. Same like two girls and one boy. But what does one on eight times eight add up to? One on eight times eight? One. So that's the sum of all the probabilities. Sum of all the possibilities. Do you get that? Is one eighth plus one eighth, eight times. All the probabilities add up to one. Which is why you're allowed to use the complementary rule. If that didn't occur, if all of those did not add up to one, you can't use that complementary events rule. And I think that's enough for today. Um, I'll set you some work. Examples that are the same as the page before, but when we get to the third example, you will never do it the way we're doing the third. Well, we might, actually. All right, let's go. Example two. A bag contains one red, one white, and one black. What do we write here? Red, white. Red, white, black. Now, because they're equally likely, I don't have to put probabilities on the branches, but we will start doing it soon. All right. A bag contains one red, one white, one black. One ball is drawn and not replaced. So if the red is drawn, what remains? White, white, white and black. If the white is taken out, red and black is left. And if the black is taken out, red and white. I'm just going in order. So the sample space. So one ball is drawn at random. It's not replaced. Second ball is then drawn. Draw a tree diagram listing all the possibilities. Okay, what do we got? Red, red, black, white, red, white, black, black, red, black, white. So the question is probability of, at, of one red ball. We got that one, that one, that one, that one. Probability of one red is four out of six, which is two thirds. Okay? What about the probability of. No, no, it's all good. We could say no reds. That's easy. Okay. Oh, what about the probability of a black and a white? Any order? Yeah, but if I said a white and then a black, then it's only one out of six. If I say a black and a white ball and I don't specify order, it is two out of six, which is a third. But if I say a black and then a white ball, it's only one out of six. Do you? So if they don't put order, if they're not specific about order, they want it in any order. Okay? It's when they put the word then, black, then white, then order is implied. Okay? So black and white is that, but probability of a black, then a white, or followed by a white, is one out of six. So it's different to black and white. All right? Now, the last example here brings us on to the next method that we're going to use. Now, there are two bags. Two bags. Bag one contains, just don't go yet, don't draw anything, contains two red and one white ball, but bag two contains one red, one white and one blue ball. So girls, this is what we've got. We've got bag one and bag two. Right, bag one and bag two. It says, a bag is selected at random, so don't worry about what's in the bags, but First thing you do, you hold these two bags in front of someone and you say choose a ball. Well, they've first got to choose a bag. You'll say choose a bag, then choose a ball from it. So the first thing we're doing is, so there are two bags. Bag one has got two red and one white. Bag two's got one red, one white, one blue. A bag is selected at random. So what are the choices? Bag one and bag two. And two balls are drawn from that bag without replacement. So from bag one, what's in there? Two. 
So you go red, red, white. And now when you come to choose ball two, it's just red and white or red and white or red and red. Because you've now from bag two, what's in it? And without replacement, if you've chosen the red, there's still chosen the white, chosen the blue. And you can list your sample space, R, 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 W, R, 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 W, W, R, W, R. Wait, and you've got to put bag one in front, one, 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 one. Then we've got bag two, R, W, bag two, R, B, two, W, R, two, W, B, two, B, R, and two, B, W. And the question is, Find the probability of two reds. So, actually everything appears to be equally likely. So we got that, that. Wee. What have we got? One, two, two. Yeah, now that, that can only be done. Does anyone know how to do it the other way? We're going to multiply. What we might do with this example, we're going to look at it again tomorrow with probabilities on the branches and we're going to multiply and, and do the proper rule to make sure that we get the same. But provided that and that are equally likely and they are and so are they and so are they because see we're putting a red, a red, a white. You don't just have one red branch here because we don't have probabilities on the branches. But every branch out is equally likely. You need to listen very carefully because every single branch branches out equally likely. You can just count but this is going to be the only time. It's going to stop today after this. We're going to be putting probabilities on branches from next lesson. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So we've got 2 out of 12 chances of 2 reds. Now, W, R there. That's an R. Fix this. So what do we multiply this? No, no, no. Don't worry about that. I'm just checking that it's right and it is. Um, but tomorrow you won't do it this way. So homework, I'll email you.